going on guys? My name is Matt Arms Sports Talk. Today I'm going to show you guys 10 quick tips to succeed in Fallout Shelter. The brand new iOS game that came out from Bethesda Studios just a couple days ago. As you can see right here right now, I'm actually not doing so hot and I wanted to do this for you guys right now while I'm not doing well. 10% because about 10 minutes ago, I was at 100% happiness. I had all my bars maxed out and I was looking great. But this just goes to show you how quickly this game can go to havoc uh, unexpectedly and just how to get around that. So I'm going to show you guys right now um, what not to do more so, um, 10, trips, 10 quick tips on how to get going in this game. So first things first, build your buildings next to each other to make sure them they are wider and they produce more. What I mean by that, you can see right here I have all of my elevators in a row right there and that makes it easy for me to make these buildings, um, these rooms. I have three, this is actually three power stations or three power generators next to each other. So if you build, as you can see right here, and we have two, this one's three, but if you build just all of them one by one, they only produce a certain amount. But if you build them next to each other, you can see right here, um, it's hard to tell you. Med Bay produces three because I have two next to each other. If I just put one and one, they would have had one production each, and that's not as good. So what you want to do is put all the similar rooms next to each other. So when you build something new, I'll show you guys right here. I can't build anything right now, but if I were to build another thing right next to this one right here, if I were to build something right here, um, I build a storage room. So that way the storage room gets even bigger and it can hold more than three separate storage rooms would. So make sure you build all of your stuff next to each other. You want to get those triple rooms up. That's the most you can do. You can see right here, I'll show you. Uh, we have a power generator right here. Power station puts out 40, 40 power. That's three generators in a row. And this one only has two generators. Um, this is also upgraded, but it puts only 26 out because there's only two. So it upgrades it uh, a little bit better. So you want to put all of your buildings next to each other when you can. The similar ones anyway. Next thing is place your dwellers in the appropriate rooms according to their personnel characteristic. Now this is really important. This is basically the main, this is the main strategy part of the game in my opinion. Um, you can see right here, this room right here, power station is S. So you go, I'll show you guys what the whole thing is here. There, everyone has a special rating. Uh, and it's cool that it's named special, but it doesn't mean special uh, with a different bar, it's just randomly. S stands for, for strength, P stands for, I mean, I can go through and show you what they all stand for, um, but let me just go to the rooms, nope, that's not it, we want to go here, um, you can see right here, all the rooms have their own personal thing, so the living quarters is charisma, power generator is strength, diner is agility, uh, water treatment is percep perception, endurance, intelligence, intelligence, charisma, strength, they all have different traits, and those traits correspond to the characters, so you can see right here, if I pick Lawrence Walker, Lawrence Walker's got a lot of, um, a lot of strength, he's got a lot of charisma, he's got some intelligence there, he's got P, what is P? I don't remember what they all are off the top of my head. Perception, he's got a perception, and they don't make perfect sense, but they make pretty good sense. So right here, to be in a diner, um, A, I think, is agility? I don't really know, I'm so, I, I'm still learning this game as well, guys, but it is... A is agility, right, okay, so agility, so we want to go here and we find someone who's got a lot of agility, so A, um, nobody's got a lot of agility there, uh, Betty Thompson's got a decent amount, um, Eulogy Jones got a decent amount, but Eulogy Jones has 10 charisma, he's got maxed out charisma, so when you put him in a living quarter with someone else, he's going to be able to make babies with that person right away, because charisma corresponds with uh, residence halls, residence halls, Charisma is their main trait, so when you put them in there, they are going to affect that room the most powerful. Um, if you're going to put someone who's got a lot of strength in a power station, that's going to be really effective on that power station. So that's how that thing works. You want to basically move your people around so they're put in the best location for whatever their thing is. So if I go here on the right and see the job, so he says S, I want to have a person with a lot of S. So Betty Thompson's in a good spot right now. Angela is in a, she's got a really high P, and the blue shows you uh, what the weapons and the outfits give that person. So their green is what they have already, and then the blue little bar there shows them what they what they get from their outfits. So um, Angela's got an outfit that gives her a lot of P, which I believe is perception. And do I have any buildings that give me perception uh, water treatment? So she should be Angela, we should move Angela to water treatment. She's in power station right now. And where is she in the power station? There she is. We should move her to the water treatment because she's got 7P. So we're going to move her there, and that's automatically going to keep her going to keep her there. And I put this 8 here. She's 8, 8, and she has whatever she has there. She has 1 there, but she is 8 here, so we're going to put her there. So we're going to switch people back and forth basically based on what they are best suited for, and that's going to help you build your production a lot quicker than you would otherwise. The next thing, number three tip I have for you guys is send your dwellers out and make sure they're well equipped. So you can see right here, if I go down to my dwellers, I have Jack Turner out on the run right now. He's level 11. Look at all the stuff he's picked up so far. He's picked up three different weapons. One of them is actually a really good weapon. Enhanced scope weapon's really good. Um, he's picked up some other stuff. He's picked up a lot of different gear. 
Uh, Rusty Pistol, unfortunately it's Rusty. He's picked up 455 caps by himself. You can see right here, I've equipped him with a ton of stuff. A hardened minigun, which is a super rare weapon, and powered armor, which gives him five strength. So he's going to be really well off out in the wasteland. Now the key here is making sure you send them out, send them out with a lot of um, armor and weapons, and make sure you don't keep them out there too long, because they will die out there a certain amount of time, no matter how much armor they have. Um, unless they have some ridiculously good shit, they're going to die eventually. See, I sense danger everywhere. This guy is freaking out. He's about to die. So you got to make sure you pull them up, uh, recall them back to the base after a certain amount of time. But you can see he's six hours out. When I recall him, it's going to take the same amount of time for him to get back as it, it took him to go out or as he's been out there so far. So keep that in mind. Put them out there. Let them get stuff. And once they get enough stuff that you think they're good to go and they're not going to die, bring them back. Next thing is super important. This is, this is the, the money ball of the game, the risk involved in the game, and it's rushing rooms. You can rush a room at any time, but it's all about the percentages. Now, my, my go-to right now is, you can see here, that room had a 41% chance of, of having an incident. This one has 26. 26 is pretty low. This one's got 35. It's kind of in the middle, and this one's got 30%. So my, my general rule of thumb, if a, if a room has gotten anything lower than 30%, rush it. The reward you guys will get, you can get XP and you'll get extra caps. Now, if you have a person uh, in that room that's got a lot of luck, you have a higher chance of getting more caps when you succeed. Now, even if you fail, nothing really happens. You get either rad roaches, you get an intrusion, or you get uh, fire. And your, your guys, as long as your guys, I have all my guys equipped with weapons, so if a rad roach happens, those rad roaches go down real quick. The only bad side is they will get radiation poisoning from the rad roaches. This one's got 26% here, so we're going to go ahead and rush it, and hopefully we will get success. We did get a success. So usually I'd say if it's under 30%, go ahead and give it a rush. I rarely have seen 30% fail, so that's pretty much my, my, my standard right there. This one's at 30% on the dots. So we're going to give that one a rush as well. But the reward you're going to get from rushing, you're not only going to get extra um, whatever that production is, but you're going to get a lot more caps. Uh, when you upgrade a person and you up, and you actually get um, production from like a food or water, you get caps for that, but you get a lot more caps from actually rushing and succeeding. This one's got 35%. We're going to see what happens here. It might fail, but if it doesn't, success. Look at the caps here. 47. Look at that. We got almost 40 caps just from rushing a room right there. So rushing is definitely the way to go. You can see right there, we started at 10%. We're already moving our way back up to that 100%. We have all of our meters back up, and we got a ton of caps out of that just from rushing. Take risks and profit. Trust me, rushing is definitely worth it. Number five tip is upgrade the health of your vault door. Now, people don't even realize you can do this because it doesn't even seem like you can, but you can upgrade your vault door, and trust me, upgrading the vault door health helps so much when intrusions come. When intruders come, they can break right through your vault door if you don't upgrade it at all. If you upgrade it, at least the first one, I think it's 500 caps, it's worth it. Trust me, it's a good go-to. Definitely go ahead and upgrade your vault door. Next thing is pretty obvious, but it's really important to this game. Make sure you go and get those achievements. You're going to get a lot of lunch boxes and caps out of it. Lunch boxes are going to be their key to getting new dwellers and new outfits that are rare. So definitely go ahead and get those lunch boxes. You can see here I've lined up three different lunch boxes. If you don't like an objective, you can actually X out of it. And then you, once you get the other, other three objectives, you can go and do it again. So right now you can see I've X out of the last one. I think was something stupid that I didn't want to go for. So I X out of it and I went to these new ones. And now I have all lunch boxes right now. Um, once I rush 15 rooms here, we're going to get another lunchbox, which is really awesome. So definitely make sure you're going for those achievements constantly. There's a lot of them. I haven't seen any repeating achievements yet, so there's definitely a lot of achievements to get that go out there and get, and they're definitely worth getting because you get a lot of good stuff out of them. One thing I want to note real quick as my number seven tip is you can revive your dead dwellers. So if you want to take a risk and let a dweller possibly die but trying to get a big reward out of it, you can revive him. They cost a lot of caps. It costs usually about a couple hundred caps depending on how highly leveled up that person is, but it's worth it and uh, you can revive them. So don't think that once they're dead, they're dead forever. If you want to take a risk with them, go for it. Next thing, number eight. Rush building production, even especially those that have a low percentage occurring of incidents. Uh, I already said this before, but I wanted to re reiterate it, guys, because it's super important to rush them, even when they have, um, there's a high chance. Now, you can't obviously rush all of your different places here, but it's definitely worth rushing. The science lab med bay, I would question rushing because you don't get that much out of it. It's always worth looking at whether or not you're going to get a lot of XP out of it. This one, I'd say it's worth it, 35%. Even if we fail, I kind of want to get one that fails. There we go, get a fail. Look at what happens here. Nothing really that bad is going to happen. The room's on fire. Um, luckily, uh, luckily, we don't have... Uh, we have a lot of people there, so they put out the fire rather quickly. Rad roaches, again, if you have uh, equipped your people with weapons, that's basically what I wanted to talk about this one. Um, this one is a little bit different than the other one. Is a, a, 
equip all of your people with weapons because what happens when you have they all have weapons is if you get a breach or a rad roach which is two of the three incidents that can happen they all have weapons to defend themselves so you don't have to move people around constantly oh who has a weapon we're going to bring them up there to, to defend the, to the base here everyone's got a weapon here so make sure you equip them all with a weapon even if it's a crappy weapon they all have weapons here um, and that's going to help a lot for incidents number nine birth as many babies as you can, but be careful because as you can see right now, I actually have a crap ton of kids. Look at I have one, uh, two, three, four, five, six. I have six children walking around right now. Children eat food and water like you've never seen, okay? And you have to have enough space for them. So they chew up resources, and unfortunately, children do not are not able to be moved or work. They just sit there. They do nothing good for you. Look at this. They just sit around all happy and they use your resources. So if you're going to have babies, good. That gives you more dwellers and eventually that'll be a good thing for you. You want more dwellers to open up new spots and new rooms. But make sure you can afford, uh, with all of your resources and production that you have right now, make sure you can afford those kids because they're expensive. Like real life, they're expensive. So make sure you can afford those babies if you're going to have them. And the number 10 tip, last one, is don't build too fast and upgrade Make sure you upgrade your power resources or your power generators quickly enough because when you put in new rooms, they eat power. Just like the kids eat the food and the water, the uh, new rooms will chew up your power. And if you don't have enough power, rooms will start shutting off. And if you can't, you can't pick which room shut off. So what happens here is you can see I have a lot of rooms with rats in them because I have nobody working in them. Because right now I need to have all my people in the rooms that matter that, that produce power and food and water for our people and unfortunately that means all these other rooms are empty and useless right now but we're actually having to power them still so make sure you upgrade your power generators enough you can fuel new upgrades fuel new rooms don't just build out the butt and not have enough power to support it so that's those those are my 10 tips guys hopefully you're enjoying this game if you haven't even played it yet i highly suggest going to play it i'm making a bunch of videos on it because i didn't even realize i was going to enjoy it but i am addicted to it it's so good this game's awesome unfortunately i just realized that i cannot play on my other ios devices you can't transfer devices so whatever device you decide to play on make sure you stay on that one fortunately you don't need internet connection to play so that's kind of a cool thing but you can't transfer accounts as far as i know right now which is a bummer so i'm playing this small screen but it is what it is. I'm addicted to it, and I can play on the go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. and get the 500 likes, that'd be awesome. Subscribe to my channel if you're new. We'll see you guys all next time. Thank you for watching, and keep on killing it in Fallout Shelter. Peace. Uh, uh, uh.